Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one we are going to stick to Sweden and this is another brewery who I have never tried anything from before so very much looking forward to this. You know there's a huge culture of home brewing here in Sweden so some of these very very small breweries can throw up some very very interesting beers. Uh, so for this one we are going to a beer that one of you guys the followers actually recommended. I can't remember exactly who it was that recommended this one to me but it's a style that I uh, have been getting really into over the last little while. So we're going to go to Eskilstuna out to the west of Stockholm once again and we're having a taste of my first ever beer from Muli's Kvarta Breakery. So this is the Dubo La Bomba which comes in at 12% ABV and it is an imperial coffee stout so it should be a little bit of a beast. As I mentioned earlier this is a style that I've been getting really really into over the past couple of months mainly on the back of the beers that Dugas Breakery and Landvetter outside of Gothenburg have been doing. You know, they produced the key and the Sidamo Dim 2 that they did in collaboration with Hunter and Sons from England. And, um, you know, those were just, um, you know, really, really top class beers. I think Dugas Brigger are probably one of the best coffee stout producers in the world. So I'm very curious to see what this one is like because a lot of people, I think this one actually came from a comment on one of those two videos. One of you guys recommended this to me on the back of those beer reviews. So, as I say, very, very curious to see what this one throws up because you guys have never ever recommended me a bad beer. So keep the recommendations coming and I do thank whoever it was that uh, recommended this beer to me. I do suspect that it might have been Shredda because he recommends quite a few very good beers to me but I do apologise if I'm crediting this one to the wrong person. But I always enjoy reviewing the beers that you guys suggest to me. So yeah, very much looking forward to this one. And as always, I hope you guys enjoy my take on this beer at 12%. This one will be a little bit of a monster. There is a regular La Bomba as well, which I believe is somewhere around 7.2%. I think it was 72 when I checked out on Untapped earlier. But as I say, very much looking forward to this one. And as always, I hope you guys enjoy my take on this beer. So anyway, as is usual with my reviews then, I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery. If you want to get straight to the tasting just fast forward all the usual links are in the description below that's the brewery website the link to my other reviews that hopefully I can do in the future from Mooley's Kvarta Brewery very first time I'm encountering one of their beers of course there's all the usual social media if you want to see more beer reviews do please consider subscribing to the channel the whole channel of course has a geography based tagging system so you can go into the home page and search for beer based on country city state county prefecture whatever it is you're interested in do check out the playlist of beers from different countries there is one there for all the Swedish beers that I've reviewed for you that's constantly being added to and as always please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review it's always great to hear from you guys that are watching the videos and the support that you show the channel is hugely appreciated so anyway to tell you a little bit about Mooley's Kvarta Brewery then so as I mentioned to you earlier Mooley's Kvarta Brewery are based in Eskilstuna and they were founded back in 2015 by Daniel Herdigan who is half German and half Swedish and also apparently a very big metal head like me. But apparently his father's German family can trace their brewing roots to the 18th century and they come from Erlangen which is just outside of Nuremberg and of course because of this German connection he spent a lot of time over there but he was actually born when his family were residing in Sweden. In this particular region of course that his family are from the Franconia region in northern Bavaria that is the region in the world that has the highest density of breweries per head of the population anywhere in the world. You've seen me review a good number of Bamberg beers, probably the most famous city in the Franconia region but you've seen me review a good number of those and the quality of beer that you get out of there when it comes to traditional beers it's second to none, you know the German craft beers or the German um, the German traditional beers I guess I should say were the things that really made me fall in love with beer in the first place thanks to my, my old flatmate Daniel of course and he lives down there and I go and visit him fairly regularly but as I mentioned uh, Daniel started this company back in 2015 he was home brewing for a number of years before that he very quickly expanded to a 500 litre brew kit and he produced around 25,000 litres of beer in 2018 with about 40 or so different beer sorts in total according to Untapped but in tw early 2018 they also produced a beer for Messiah Markelin's 50th birthday this was called Doom Warrior if you don't know who Messiah Messiah Markelin is. He was the, the kind of iconic singer for Candlemas, one of the very famous Swedish doom metal bands. And he also produced as well a special beer called Tompi for his friend who he attended various metal festivals with. And this was to kind of uh, help him out when his child was sick with cancer. And the labels on the beers that you'll find from Millie's Quarter Brewery as well are made by Daniel's brother Björn 
which are uh, very, very nice as well. And they're quite, um, they're very distinctive actually. They're very almost kind of cartoony labels and I think they are um, very, very nice actually. So it's kind of cool to have a brewery like this that has the real kind of home-brewed touch to it because if you look at these labels, you know, they do very much... Um, you know, they are very much along the lines of, it, it, it's a good, you know, it's good art, but at the same time, it has that kind of homemade feel to it. And that's what you want with these little uh, craft brewery, uh, these little craft breweries as well. But, you know, very, very nicely presented. And as I say, this is a brewery that has um, a very kind of metal connection to it. So I'm a huge fan of metal music, if you hadn't guessed from the beard and the long hair and stuff like that. So it's, um, it's very, very cool. To, uh, to kind of come across this one as well. It reminds me a little bit actually of Paxbroi in um, in Germany. So if you get the chance to try some of the Paxbroi beers from Germany, then definitely check them out. So it feels like there's a little bit of a connection uh, between these two breweries. I'd be very curious to know if they're actually aware of each other. That would be interesting to know. But yeah, that's all you really need to know about uh, Merli's Quartabreggeri just now. As I say, the very first time I've encountered their, uh, their beers before, but this one came off the back of uh, one of the recommendations of you guys that are watching the channel. Channel. So a huge thank you for that. If you want to learn a little bit more about Murley's Quarter Brewery, of course, do check out the brewery website. You'll find that in the description below and you can follow them on Instagram and Facebook and things like that to keep up to date with all the latest goings on. But let's have a taste of this beer then. I'm very curious to see how this one turns out. So I'll just let you have a little look at the artwork again before we open it up. There you can see the nice uh, boy the brewery boiling stove there, which is quite nice. You can see the front of it, Murley's... Uh, Mooley's, how would you say, Mooley's double La Bomba. As I mentioned to you earlier, there is a regular La Bomba, which I think comes in at around 7.2%. And there you can see the nice owl on this one as well. So we can get rid of the brewery notes for this and we can actually get on with the tasting. Like I mentioned, a 12% 12 uh, 12 Imperial Coffee Stout, this one. It says, in your hand you have an Imperial Double Coffee Stout, the strongest and darkest beer that we have made at, um, long, at Molly's Brewery so far. Um, this one is filled with espresso, La Bomba Cafe, and it's got chocolate caramel, uh, I don't know what that word is, um, and it's got a very, very war kind of warming sensation to it, basically. Drink, um, you drink drink it respectfully, basically, it's saying on the side here. But yeah, it should be a really, really nice beer. This one, just a plain bottle cap on this. And I do find it quite interesting, actually. You know, it's a, a brewer with a German heritage, but they're selling this beer in the little, uh, almost Belgian uh, bottles, actually. These little Belgian stubby type things. Although, in fairness, Astra from, um, from Hamburg is a beer in Germany that you'll find quite a popular beer, actually, that sells their beers in these little leg uh, kind of stubby bottles but yeah without further ado then let's get this guy out and we'll get on with the tasting a 330 milliliter beer 12 percent imperial coffee stout and as i say thank you to whoever gave me this uh, recommendation i think this is going to be an absolute monster of a beer and you can kind of tell immediately with this one on the pour this one is going to be an absolute beast of a beer look how difficult it is to actually get any head on that let's just see we get anything at all. <laughs> Just a very, very thin foamy layer on this one, actually. So that's quite interesting. So as you can see, and as you would expect with this beer, yeah, you can only really get a very thin foamy layer on this one, but as you can see, and as you would expect from an Imperial Coffee Stout, it's poured a lovely big dark ebony rosewood colour. There's one or two big bubbles sticking towards the side of the glass there and you can see a few very small little ones just heading up towards the, the bottom of the beer there, just the foamy layer where the, the bottom of where that beer should where the head should be on this one. But it looks absolutely lovely. You can tell from just how long um the la or how big the lacing is on this beer, how quickly it's gonna you know how high in alcohol it is because it you know the length of time it takes for this lacing to kind of go down is always an indicator of how much alcohol is in the beer. So I think this one is going to be an absolute monster of a beer. So yeah, you know, nothing overall surprising about this one in terms of its appearance when you consider that it's an Imperial Coffee Stout. But let's take a closer look at the aroma and just see how we get on with this. And as I said, I expect an absolute monster from this beer. Oh, yeah. Yeah, no, that beer, 
this is going to be an absolute beast. Um, straight, you know, as you would expect, the coffee is really coming to the forefront of this one. For me, the coffee bean comes out as being very quite, you know, is really quite roasty. There's a good bit of earthiness in there, but at the same time, it has a little bit of a kind of floral aromatic quality to it as well. You know, I probably should mention with these, I love reviewing coffee stouts for you, but I never drink coffee. Uh, and it's one of these kind of weird things. I really appreciate the kind of complexity that coffee beans can give you in terms of aroma and in terms of flavour, but I never ever drink coffee. Coffee, to be quite honest. It's just something I've never ever taken to, but if you have it mixed in with these different stout flavours, you know, it can be absolutely beautiful. But to me, the coffee beans that are in this one are coming out as quite roasted, definitely a bit darker and earthy, but at the same time you've got a lovely sort of floral aromatic note to the coffee bean as well. And we are only talking about the coffee beans so far. So for me, with this one, You've got a lovely, uh, behind that coffee bean, you've definitely got a nice little bit of chocolatey quality there. It's quite a high cocoa chocolate. Um, it's kind of a nice, um, you've got a sort of 80-90% cocoa chocolate to this one as well. And it's lovely, kind of big and oily, but at the same time there is an element of a sweeter, milky chocolate to this beer as well, which is really interesting. Yeah. If you take this beer in quite deeply, it's just interesting how that blends together. This beer, in terms of its aroma, it really leans towards the darker, roasty, toasty side of things because of that high cocoa chocolate. And it's almost got a little bit of a kind of charred chocolate quality to it as well, to be honest with you. But you can definitely pick up some nice brown sugars to this beer. Um, I would say a kind of treacly molasses sort of thing. Yeah, definitely a big kind of treacly molasses sort of thing in there. It's almost like that really caramelised, very dark brown sugar in there. But it does have an element of sweetness to it as well. There's a little touch of a nutty, woody quality to the beer also. But I really like how everything is going together in this one. It really is. Um, the, the, even in terms of the aroma, you can tell that this beer is an absolute beast. Um, in terms of the hoppy side of things, you can pick up a little bit of earthiness from the hops, um, but not much else otherwise. There's not even too much of a grassy kind of floral thing coming out of this beer. On the fruity side of things, there is a little bit of a, a kind of red fruity quality to this one. You can pick out a little touch of a raisiny sharpness to this one, maybe even a little bit of a kind of fit, you know, maybe even a little bit of a kind of dainty kind of quality to it as well. Um, but it has a little bit of a sharper red candied fruit aroma coming out of it the late the further you go into the aroma as well. But I mean overall the aroma of this beer is really nice. It leans towards that roasty toasty side of things in terms of the style. But um, yeah, as I always say, take a little bit of time and enjoy the aroma of the beer before you get stuck into it. But we are going to have a taste of this one now. So this one is the Dubo La Bomba, uh, an Imperial Coffee Stout coming in at 12% from Mulli's Kvato Bregri up in Eskilstuna, team near Stockholm here in Sweden. Let's get stuck in. Slange, skull. Yeah. I'll tell you something as well. That's a really just beautiful beer. So whoever rec whoever it was that recommended this one to me, just thank you. That's <laughs> straight away. One sip. That's just an awesome, awesome beer. If you get the chance to try this one you and you enjoy the coffee stout style or even the Russian Imperial stouts and stuff like that, you're certainly not going to regret this. This is up there with the things that, like as I mentioned, that Dugas Bregery are producing. The first thing I'm noticing about it is it's extremely, extremely smooth in this one. There's very, very little carbonation to this. So just be aware of that. It is very oily, but at the same time, if I think about the other coffee stouts I've had, I kind of find this one to be quite sweet in comparison to the other ones. But that said, in the aftertaste, and I'm starting to get some of these flavours in the aftertaste now, you really start to get more of the roasty, kind of toasty side of things in the aftertaste too. But it's, it's um, as I say, a very, very nice beer, this one. And it just on first impressions, it can definitely stand up there with the likes of these things that you're getting from... Um, from Dugas Bravery and some of the other big stout producers as well. And it's quite a hard style to brew if you're a small scale brewer. To get an imperial stout like this um, is, is quite difficult, so it's impressive to see such a small brewery produce something like this. 
but um, yeah, this is a, a lovely, lovely beer, this. So let's try and break this down a little bit then. So just kind of forming the linchpin of the beer, you can feel there's a bit of a roasty, toasty um, black malt to this one. But on top of that, immediately, you get some of that lovely coffee bean smoothness there. And very quickly, the chocolatey flavours kind of just even kind of pat that down a little bit. So you've got the roasty black malt just forming the backbone of the beer. The coffee beans just smooth out on top of that and the lovely chocolatey flavours. Are just kind of sitting there on, uh, are just sitting there on top of that. The coffee, the 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 sort of chocolatey flavours that you're getting out of this one are very kind of high cocoa, you know, sort of eighty percent. But at the same time, you can pick out there's definitely a milkier element to this beer as well. So you've got some lovely. Uh, more milky chocolatey qualities as well which is just it's just awesome there's so much going on in this beer it's definitely one of the more kind of complex coffee stouts that I've come across in recent times but yeah these birds out the back are going absolutely mental um, but yeah the the brown sugars in this beer are very very nice as well right in the centre of your palate you can really pick out these lovely caramelly, um, treacly, molasses type notes. I'd say it actually leans more towards this the, the kind of toasted caramel note there. There is an element of toastiness to that in the middle of your palate, um, but it really is quite sweet actually. As I've mentioned a couple of times, this is one of the sweeter uh, one of the sweeter coffee stouts that I've come across in recent times. We don't even need to kind of think about the imperial side of things at the moment. It's just a very, it is quite a sweet coffee stout this one, but it works very, very well for it. But in the centre of your palate, you've got a lovely kind of sweet caramelly quality to this one, little touch toasted as well and um, it really blends nicely with those chocolatey flavours. The coffee side of this beer, as I was picking up in the aroma, it's a very smooth roasty quality there, it has got a little bit of an earthiness to it and the further you go into the aftertaste you can feel some of the more kind of floral elements pushing their way out of the coffee beans as well. If you come further forward on the palate you've got a nice woody element to the beer and then if you go right into the centre of your palate at the front there's a little touch of nuttiness in there, but those are quite subtle flavours. As I say, the, the overall impression I have of this beer is that it's quite a sweet imperial coffee stout. Um, but the way all these flavours blend together is just absolutely beautiful. You know, it get, This beer gets a huge thumbs up from me. Molly's Quarter Gregory have done a, an awesome, awesome job of this, and I can see why uh, this, this beer was recommended to me. It's just absolutely awesome. Yeah, you know this beer. It really, it really wouldn't look out of place against the likes of the Key and the Sidamo Dim too. From uh, from Dugas Bregery, and you know there are some really good um, coffee stout beers from the likes of Omni Pollo as well. And it, it, it's as I say, it certainly wouldn't look out of place there. And for a, such a small brewery to produce something like this. That is very, very impressive. Um, on the hoppy side of things then, there's not too much going on with this. It's kind of what you would expect. Um, in the back corners of the palate, you've got a nice dark earthiness there. It's quite a strong earthiness. You are getting a little bit of bitterness out of that. And that kind of balances out the sweetness of this beer a little bit. Um, but as you come further forward along the sides of your tongue, that earthiness just smooths out a little bit. You can pick up a little tiny bit of floral quality at the front corners of the palate and round the very front curve of the tongue. It's a little bit lighter and grassy and of course behind the front curve of the palate, that's where you get that little oily bubble where those juicy fruity esters start to come out of the beer. And the fruity notes in this beer are actually quite subtle I would say. Yeah, so for me, um, this one is really nice. It's the fruity side of the beer is also very nice, and that complements the sweeter nature of this beer, I guess you could say. And um, so there's a little, there's not really much sharpness to this. It's more of a kind of figgy and kind of almost pruny fruity quality you're getting out of this. The further you go into the aftertaste, it does become a little bit more of a kind of candied red fruit ester, like those little heart shaped sweets you get in the Haribo Star Mix. It does have a little element of that to it. But um, yeah, the, the fruity notes, um, the fr it, it complements these sweeter flavours very well and it complements the darker side of the chocolate flavour as well. Um, but the further I'm finding you're going into the aftertaste, you do start to get more of the roasty, toasty side of things, more of the earthiness, more of the roasty elements of the coffee, but also a little bit of that kind of black malty uh, backbone to this one kind of popping out. But overall, it's just, it's a really beautiful beer, this one, and I'm glad, you know, 
whoever recommended me uh, that who recommended this beer to me has you know really knows what they're talking about as I say I suspect it was Shredder but I can't remember exactly who it was that recommended this one to me but it's it's absolutely lovely and um, I'm very glad that I was able to review this one for you here on the channel so I think this is yet another brewery that I need to keep an eye on uh, in the future because it's just an awesome awesome beer so if you like the coffee stout style definitely check this one out. So in terms of the mouthfeel then, full bodied beer, carbonation is very very smooth in this one, I don't even think there is any carbonation in this beer to be honest with you. Lovely big oily mouthfeel, the malt base very very smooth, leaning towards the sweet side of things but you have got a little bit of a roasty quality that comes out later in the, the aftertaste, a bit of kind of roasty quality from the coffee beans as well. The hops are very smooth in this one, if I had to guess an IBU, I think this one's sitting somewhere around the 50 mark. Um, which is quite low for an imperial stout in fairness but lovely sweet malt base but roasty kind of backed up with the roastiness smooth hops and just a lovely little touch of a juicy fruity quality to the beer as well but overall it's just a beautiful beer and as I say I can see why this one was quite highly regarded by you guys that are watching the channel this one definitely stands up there with some of these beers that you're going to find from uh, from the Dugasbury or from Omnipoi, it really is that good in Imperial Stout. So hopefully we see more experimentation from this brewery in the future, and this is one that I'll definitely be keeping an eye on. But let's leave it at that for this. So this one was the Dubel La Bomba from uh, Murley's Quarter Brewery in Eskilstuna, just outside of Stockholm here in Sweden. An awesome, awesome beer, and I'm very glad that I was able to review this for you. And thank you to whoever made the recommendation. So until the next time, Stanja just now. Make sure you check out my social media. Yeah, let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comment section below. Let me know what your favourite beers are from Millie's Quarter Brewery as well. And I, you can rest assured I will definitely return to this brewery at some point in the fairly near future. So until the next time, Slanja just now. I'll catch you guys later. Slanja, skull, cheers. Awesome beer. Make sure you try it if you like the style. Skull.